Hello everyone and welcome to the week 26 edition of Instant Replay where I give you my take on the most controversial calls of the weekend. I'm Simon Bourne. We start at RFK Stadium where it was 1-0 DC United when right back Chris Korb was clipped by Toronto's Ashton Morgan right on the edge of the penalty area. No whistle by referee Chris Penso and the match would finish in a 1-1 tie. In Vancouver, the Whitecaps appealed for four penalty kicks, but they went 0 for 4. In first half stoppage time, they wanted a handball on Juninho, but he's clearly making an attempt to kick the ball, and his hands are also up against his body. Then, in the 50th minute, the Caps shouted handball again, this time on A.G. De La Garza, but that's ball to hand, folks. De La Garza had no time to react. In the 79th minute, Vancouver claimed there was a foul by Omar Gonzalez on this play in the box, but I see nothing irregular there. And lastly, in second half stoppage time, the Whitecaps felt Juninho committed yet another handball. That's another ball to hand. And it's an LA Galaxy player who kicks the ball into Juninho's hand. Great job by referee Armando Villarreal, who didn't fall for any of them. Referee Kevin Stott made the right call on the penalty kick awarded to Chivas USA in their 3-2 win over New York. Ibrahim Sicagia clearly steps in front of Eric El Cubo Torres. That's a penalty. Another official who was spot on, Mark Geiger in Chicago versus Sporting. In the 54th minute, Chicago's Mike McGee goes down in the penalty area after contact with Aurelien Kalan. No penalty given. The first lunge by Kalan looked bad, but McGee doesn't go down. Then comes the arm to the back, but it didn't look like it was enough for a PK. Good no call. Meanwhile, Philadelphia Union fans are up in arms about the Connor Casey goal that was disallowed by Alan Chapman at Gillette Stadium, which would have put him up 2-1. Casey pounces on a loose ball between the legs of goalkeeper Matt Reese, and he pokes it home. But Chapman whistles for the foul. I don't see it. In my opinion, the goal should have stood. It was the second disallowed goal in a two-minute span for Philly. Just before the controversial Casey call, Sebastian Latou knocks a rebound into the back of the net, but assistant Craig Lowry flags him for offside. You can see here, when the shot goes off, Latou is in fact in an offside position. Great call. While the TV replay helps us on that one, there was not one available on the play that led to the second yellow received by Federico Higuain in second half stoppage time at Rio Tinto but we have the low-res stadium video that shows why the second yellow was justified. Look at how Higuain rams into Real Salt Lake's Nat Borgers with the ball nowhere in sight. Assistant referee Kevin Deliba spotted it and alerted head ref Silvio Petrescu. The red card means that Higuain will now be out two games, one for yellow card accumulation on this first yellow and another for the red. Next. Plenty to chew on in Dallas San Jose where there were three red cards issued. But we start with some penalty kick controversy. First, in the 44th minute, it looked to me like Chris Wondolowski was tripped up by Jair Benitez. But referee Baldomero Toledo does not call it and Wando gets a yellow for descent. And now to the penalty that was called by Toledo. Many feel that Blas Perez should get punished for simulation after this challenge by Victor Bernard is in the box. They say the forward made a meal of the contact to his shoulder, but what they're missing is Bernardes clipping Perez's right knee in the challenge. In fact, you also see Perez motioning to grab his right knee in the aftermath. So in the end, there's no case for simulation. Toledo got it right. He was also spot on with the red cards issued in this one. This tackle by Justin Morrow definitely endangered the safety of Ramon Nunez, even though the Dallas player bounced up right away to continue his run. And no doubt about Bernardes and Kenny Cooper also deserving their sending off in the 86th minute. Bernardes appears to step near Cooper's groin, and then Cooper retaliates. So Rafael Baca saw his prayers answered by Toledo after he went on his knees begging for a card. Baca should probably be praying that teammate Jason Hernandez does not see any discipline for his use of an expletive in the face of fourth official Kevin Terry Jr. before entering the game as a sub. And lastly, we head to Seattle for the big Cascadia match between the Timbers and Sounders. And while we agree with Timbers manager Caleb Porter that there should have been a yellow to Osvaldo Alonso who committed five fouls in the game, the big talking point from this one were the incidents involving Pa Moduka and Eddie Johnson. First, the yellow received by Ka in the 59th minute for this dangerous tackle on EJ. It's pretty comparable to the Morrow tackle that earned him a red card in Frisco. Similarly, I think Ka's challenge could have been an ankle breaker, and if you're endangering the safety of your opponent, that calls for a red. Referee Jair Marufo went with a yellow. Ka may not have been sent off at CenturyLink, but many are calling for a disciplinary committee suspension after he bumped Johnson's head with his leg following a foul committed outside the Timbers box. Many immediately compared the incident to the Thierry Henry bump on Roger Espinosa back in 2011. That was punished by a red card from the referee. But there's a more recent precedent. Johnson himself was actually involved in a similar play back in May when he walked into Philadelphia's Antoine Hoppeno. But it's worth noting there was no disciplinary committee sanction for that one. So with that precedent, should Ka get off easy? That's all we have for this week. 
For our editor, John Benton, I'm Simon Borg. We'll see you next time.